Um, let's see. Do, do, do. You know what? Let's take Andrew in Tinsburg, Ohio. Trin- you- Trinsburg. Trinsburg, Ohio. How are you doing, Andrew? Yo, baby. Hey, where, where is Trinsburg? Apart from Ohio. Earth. It's halfway between Cleveland, halfway between uh, Akron. Okay. Cleveland, half and Cleveland, Akron, yeah. It's funny because when people call from Ohio and it's a town I've never heard, it's always halfway between Cleveland and, and Cincinnati or Cleveland and Columbus or, or Cincinnati and Columbus or, you know, they, they point out the big cities. It's always halfway in between. That's where everybody is, right in the middle. Well, we have the largest uh, twins festival oh. in the world uh, every August. So, like, 2,000 sets of twins come. And oh. it's, cr- it's just crazy. <laughs> so, is it, actually twi- is it actually Twinsburg or Trinsburg? Twinsburg. Ah, okay. So we have a typo uh, on oh. Twinsburg makes more sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've called the atheist experience before. Yeah. yeah. We've talked before. Right. Well, welcome to Talk Ethan. What do you yeah, got yeah. for us? It says yeah, you want to. the first time I've called this show, so this is exciting. Yeah. Well, well, welcome. It says here you want to give evidence for the biblical magi? Yeah, I found uh, two references outside the Bible of that. Uh, that. Uh, in 66 AD, Magi visited Nero, and uh, in 10 BC, Magi vi- visited Her- Her- Herod. And I always thought that was weird because it's only in Matthew the Magi story, and mm. why Matthew would put that in, I don't know why. Uh, only Matthew would put that in. Or whomever wrote the book of Matthew, you mean? Well, I'm a, I have to believe Matthew wrote that. I'm a Christian. So. I mean, you don't. Well, you no, to actually, you that. don't. Yeah. The book is anonymous. Um, the name. So, every responsible Christian scholar on the planet will tell you that we have no idea who wrote the book of Matthew, and that Matthew was a name attributed as a matter of church tradition. No, no reasonable biblical scholar on the planet thinks that the book of Matthew was actually written by Matthew. And if you open up Bibles that actually have uh, cover pages and stuff, like if, if you have an NIV Bible, if you open it up to the book of Matthew, there's a cover page that describes the book and authorship and points this out. So there's nothing about Christianity that requires you to believe that a, an anonymous book was actually written by a specific individual. Well, we talked about this last time, and we got we went over it. And there's different. Uh, you you got mad because uh, I said uh, harmony of the gospels last time. All right. Well, I mean, I so in between now and the, and the next time you call, it might be worth it to talk to some biblical scholars and figure out whether Matt's point is. Uh, well, one that you should accept. Let's just but let's just focus on what you're the, saying today. Of, of the biblical magi, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say, my understanding, and I, you know, I don't have as good a knowledge of the New Testament as Matt here, at least, um, is that the magi story, or you, you're referring to, like the magi that visited Jesus, or am I missing something? Yes, it's only in Matthew. Yes. So, okay. Matthew, so, because yeah. the two things that you described were. There were magi that visited Nero and magi that visited Herod. Yeah, so we both have Roman magi visiting a Roman emperor and Herod, who was like the name. He, he was, uh, I think, he was something around the Jerusalem area. Okay, think. so just just to clarify, I mean, it, it would be good. I, I'd like. I mean, I already know that. Oh, we'll have to follow up um, on the the Reddit or something. You know, after the. Um, research for this has been done, but uh, you, are you saying that those visits are evidence that there was a third yeah, visit? The story of, is plausible. The story is plausible in the Bible. Oh, oh, it's it's plausible that Jesus, as an infant, was visited by magi because magi existed in uh, the ancient Roman world. Is sort of the, the point you're making? That's like saying it's plausible that Jesus was laid in a manger because mangers existed in the world. Uh, it's 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 certainly not outside the realm of pro- possibility, yeah. but it doesn't in any way demonstrate that that element of the story is true. I agree, but uh, I don't really have a grand slam argument for the Bible. I don't know what kind of arguments you're looking for. No, oh, no, I just mean so. It, okay, that's so, good. You you found a a reference to something that is. Um, you didn't even have to go that far. You could have just said Herod was real, and I would have said, "Yep, Herod was real." 
Uh, and, and you could have said, Quinius was real. Yep, I, I would be willing to accept that, but that doesn't prove that there was uh, a, a census conducted along that time where people had to travel to Jerusalem to, to register for it. So proving some elements of a story are real or plausible doesn't do anything for the other elements of the story, especially when the other elements of the story are a, uh, an immaculate conception, uh, you know, followed by a virgin birth, followed by signs in the heaven, followed by a life of purported miracles and stuff like that. Each of those things needs evidence for it. It's, I mean, an example we've used over and over again, um, which I, I think either came from Jeff D. or Russell, which is if archaeologists dig up New York in a thousand years, that doesn't prove that Spider-Man was real. Well, if God took human form, wouldn't you think it would be a, not a typical birth? I, first, well, no, no. One, I, I, I feel like if God, if there was a being called, there was like a god, and it took human form, that a giant flash of light that was, you know, dem demonstrable and somehow visible to everyone on Earth because light is affected by gravity, and you could see it on the horizon, and just the magical appearance of a fully grown human form would be a much more miraculous appearance that people would be unable to deny, but. I'd like to hit the New York example again, which well, is if a thousand years pass and archaeologists dig up uh, New York City and a religion is formed that revolves around Spider-Man, how would their justifications for the existence of Spider-Man be different than your justifications for uh, the resurrection? Like, what is it that you can say about the resurrection that they can't say about Spider-Man? in terms of providing evidence? Well, we have four different Gospels, and they all describe... One of them, they all describe the resurrection in all four Gospels. I mean, we have more than four movies, not to mention the, the hundreds of comics. And trust so me, there's some the, nerds that have, have written a lot about continuity. Nerd is, is a, a loving term that I use and, and strive for, but there's a lot of, oh, concordance between the various comic book editions. And I don't mean, I don't mean to go backward, uh, yeah. mostly because I, I think the, the point that James just made is, is accurate. But you said, you know, if God were to take hum human form, wouldn't you expect it to be a remarkable thing? Well, in many other religions, um, when their gods seem to take human form or when there's a special prophet born or whatever, and in many superhero uh, fictional accounts and mythological accounts, yes, there are mirac miraculous circumstances tied to birth. Mm -hmm. But you've skipped past the most important question, which was the very first thing you said. If God decided to take human form, if you begin with that assumption, then you will always find that the evidence seems to fit that. But that's not an assumption you get to make. The assumptions that we make influence how we're going to understand the evidence that we're presented. So the actual evidence is we have an anonymous record of a virgin birth. Now, outside of species like snakes and others that have demonstrated parthenogenesis, we're unaware of anything like parthenogenesis in humans. But even if we had parthenogenesis in humans, the offspring would be female. So having a male uh, conceived without, you know, uh, human contact between two people, uh, yeah, that's kind of miraculous. Except that you don't have any evidence for any of that. You don't have any evidence. First of all, it's difficult to show that Jesus even existed, but let alone uh, the nature of his conception or birth. These are all just claims. And it strikes me as really odd. Um, why would a God operate in this way? One of the most common arguments we get about the resurrection, which I think is going to be coming up in, in another call, is how do you explain the empty tomb? And my answer is, what empty tomb? We have a story about an empty tomb. I'm sure there's an empty tomb somewhere. How do you demonstrate that this tomb that is empty now was empty on Easter Sunday and is in fact the tomb where they buried Jesus? You can't demonstrate any of that. It's all stuff that just has to be taking, taken on faith. All right, all right, but back to the uh, virgin birth. Uh, when you look at the Gospel of Luke, he's... He expands on Mark and Matthew. Why? Wait, well, here let's 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 expands on Mark, but well, let let's let's start with the beginning of that sentence. 
why should we start with a gospel, any gospel, Luke or otherwise? These are the four gospels. These are the these. This is the four gospels that were written down that we Christians worship. Well, yes, I understand, but why should we start with those instead of finding? I prefer the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the Marvel comics. And so when they come in conflict, my Marvel religion is going to say that the comics are wrong and the movies are right. And other people's religion, Marvel religion, is going to say that the comics are right and the movies are wrong. So the question is, do we have any way of showing that either of us are correct? What evidence are you looking for, I guess, on the Bible or the New Testament, Old Testament. Well, so from the Bible yeah. isn't what we're, we're looking for. So if someone hands me a, you know, the, a copy of their journal day to day, you know, if it, and, in, and a police investigator gets a copy of someone's journal day to day and they want to verify, you know, oh, I was, I was in New Jersey at the time. The, the, that's the entry for the journal. They don't go, oh, okay, well, that's evidence and it says it in there. They're going to go check, you know, uh, whether your car went on a toll road. They're going to go see where you were. They're going to do investigating about the claims. Your Bible is, a, is like the journal in that analogy. It says Jesus was in New Jersey at the time. And Matt is asking, okay, well, do you have uh, evidence that suggests, oh, the license plate on his car went across the toll road, or, oh, you know, here's a receipt from whatever restaurant where he was there. Where is the evidence outside? Here's what I saw. Yeah, the actual say, evidence. When you say what evidence from the Bible, that's functionally identical to me saying what evidence from Infinity War. Well, I disagree because it's well, four actually, different authors. That I you, should, you, you should disagree because there's exactly one released version of Infinity War. There's not interpretations of Infinity War. There's not multiple der derivations of Infinity War, the, the, the film. Uh, at, whereas in the Bible we have, uh, at least with respect to the Gospels, we have three that are synoptic and one that is off on its own, and they are uh, anonymous. We don't have any ability to investigate the claims within them to find out if they're true. And those books were selected from a bulk of potential other books, and the ones that got put into the Bible are just the ones that people agreed should be in the Bible. What about other books that should have been in the Bible? What about the Shepherd of Hermas? What about the Apocalypse of Peter? These books that were considered um, inspired by the same God and yet didn't become canon because they weren't voted on. But that's why we have more things in the Gospels. We got the first epistle of John, and John tackles that bad teaching that Jesus was on earth only in spirit and not in body. So, so we have different gods. Okay, you, say, you say it's a bad teaching. How do you know? Yeah. Because John is an eyewitness and he's, he wrote five of the books of the New Testament. Okay, so you're yeah, going to believe what? eyewitnesses? Am I going to believe eyewitnesses? Yes. Okay, that's where we're going to have a problem then because first of all, I'm not convinced you have an eyewitness and second of all, I'm not convinced eyewitness testimony is reliably because all the evidence, reliable because all the evidence points to the fact that eyewitness testimony is not reliable. And when, when you're talking about whether, whether or not Jesus was actually a person or a spiritual thing, I'm fine with the notion that Jesus could have been a person. Uh, what I'm not fine with are the miracles. Do, do you not think that people in other religions have claim to be eyewitnesses to miraculous events? Yes, I saw one about uh, Hinduism where they put uh, milk on a statue and they said it soaked up uh, soaked up the milk, but they had an explanation for that. It was just the, the statue was like... No, 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 no. no. Made out of Muhammad flies to heaven on a pegasus. Pro well, pro his bones prove are in Saudi Arabia. Prove that. Bones are in Saudi Arabia. There goes that. His bones are in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. How, do you, know, how do you know? I'm pretty sure that's what I read online. Oh, you read it online? Well, fuck, why are we even bothering no, to talk about he's it? He's pretty sure that he read that online, yeah. Well, you can look it up for me, because I don't have a computer for me. Okay. Well, so here's, here's what I will say. It's, you know, I will say that phrase because I say it often, apparently. But just as a, quick, as a quick side note, I don't want just this call to be the end of this uh, dialogue because there's so many references to oh, this piece of information, but we need more research, or, oh, Herod was around Jerusalem at the time, I think. Those are things that um, can be researched. 
as a quick side note, one, a, a second call would be great, but, but two, do you get online to have these discussions? I mean, Talk Even has a Reddit, if that's something that you can do, r slash Talk Even. I have called the agency experience five times, so. Okay. I mean, do you engage there's online on as Friday. well? There's another show on Friday, I saw. Yeah, Truth, Truth Wanted. Wanted. It's, a, it's a good show. People should tune in and uh, support it as well and support this show. And support. People should watch all of our shows, like and subscribe, and we should get a trillion dollars in donations so we can help people. But um, uh, do you engage on online at all? Because I think that there's, you know, like you said, I'd look it up, but I don't have a computer in front of me. If you engage online, you always have a computer in front of you. Is that something I can persuade you to maybe look into doing in between yeah. calls? All right, cool. Um, yeah, sorry. Let's continue the discussion where we were. That or I can circle around to wouldn't a God appearing on Earth be miraculous in terms of the way it was done? But Yeah, that, that, yeah. Sorry, did you want to continue pointing out that you have four Gospels, well, there are more than that, and they all disagree. Sorry, I'm asking Matt where he wanted to go with the conversation. No, no, I, w oh. wherever Andrew wants to go next, it's just that it seems to me that the big disagreement here is we have a story, and it would be nice to find out whether or not it's true. Um, and a number of people are just saying, well, these were eyewitnesses, and I'm going to take their word for it. Well, first of all, you don't know who wrote it. You don't necessarily know that they were eyewitnesses, and you know eyewitness testimony is unreliable. So... That would be insufficient for even mundane claims, let alone miraculous claims. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you say, hey, I just got a scratch-off ticket uh, and, and won 500 bucks, I'm probably going to take your word for it uh, because it you know, doesn't impact me that much in any way. It's something that I know happens all the time. If you come in and you say that you have the, the winning $300 million lottery ticket, uh, I'm probably going to need a little bit more than your word to be convinced, but there's the possibility of evidence there. Mm -hmm. If instead you say, God told me that I'm going to win the lottery in the next three years, well, okay, even if you win the lottery in the next three years, that does not mean that God actually told you that. There's a different standard of evidence that would need to, to be uh, brought forward to show that these two things are actually connected and it's reasonable to conclude. Because if you don't do that, then someone like me, someone, a, a magician, a mentalist, can convince you that we have amazing powers. If your standards of evidence for determining that a God exists would also show that I can actually read minds, your standards of evidence are flawed. If, if your standards of evidence can lead to two things being true that are mutually exclusive, your standards of evidence are flawed. All I'm ever saying is to work towards having the best possible standards of evidence. I'm not saying there is no God, you guys are wrong about God, the Gospels are all lies, they're all fictions. I'm saying that they cannot and have not met their burden of proof. And the people who think they have are fundamentally flawed in their reasoning, but it's completely understandable. This is often the result of indoctrination. Not everybody spends a lot of time learning about logical fallacies and how important they are. Uh, it's We go by our gut. And we don't want to call people liars. And so if somebody says, hey, I, I saw this thing, we want to believe them because we want to show them that we don't think that they're a terrible, dishonest person. And while when somebody comes and tells me they were abducted by aliens, I'm willing to believe that they had an experience that they are trying to describe as honestly as possible. And yet that does not mean I have reason to conclude they were actually abducted by aliens. It's the set of differences I find in the Gospels that make them appealing to me. Do you understand, like, the, the Lord's Prayer is different than in Matthew and Luke? So, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. So, I mean, are we, are you going to acknowledge the, at least the point that Matt was trying to? Yes, I understand. I don't want to, uh, yeah, I so, understand. We have two. So, if the Gospels yeah. all agreed exactly... That would that would be an argument for either they're true and accurate, or they were copied, or they were copied from each other. If the Gospels disagree on subtle details but get the general story right, all that does is show that there were there was a story that different people were trying to convey. If you ask, Jamie was over uh, at my house last night, uh, along with a couple other people, 
And if you asked each of us to describe what happened and what words were said, you're going to get the same basic story from the five of us, but you're going to get slightly different versions of the story. And there may be even points that we disagree on. Yep. Does that tell you at all what the truth was? Well, you made a good point about eyewitness testimony being unreliable. Yes. But you said that didn't, that didn't, that I forgot what you said about eyewitness testimony doesn't prove anything. So there's, there's parts of the way that Matt describes the, the reliability or, or lack thereof of eyewitness testimony that I would describe slightly differently because Matt says studies show it's not reliable. Well, yes, they, they do, but reliability is not binary. Right. Right. So there's, uh, it's sort of like what, what's the difference between, you know, a, a video of an event that's HD in color with sound and grainy footage from 50 feet away where you can see shapes moving, right? There's a different level of reliability if you're trying to conclude who did what even in a video. And the prop, like, to, so there's different levels of reliability. And I, I hope that that concept is one that I've gotten uh, across, Andrew. And um, going from there, even, human memory is not like a video camera. People, based on emotional responses and even how you ask them questions about, oh, hey, what happened there, right? The difference between asking eyewitnesses of a car crash, so what happened after, uh, can you describe what happened after the red car smashed into the blue car? They're 70% more likely to remember there being broken glass at the scene when there wasn't, if you ask them when they smashed into each other versus when the cars collided or after the incident or just the words, please describe what happened. Because, human, because human smash, memory is smash implies the breaking of something, and that's what people think of in car crashes. Or to make a distinction between imply and infer, people infer broken oh. glass from a smash. There, there's, a, there's an even bigger well, problem here, which is you're, you're basically trying to argue on behalf of, uh, of a god who has a better understanding of all of this than we do. And while that makes it impossible for us to properly put ourselves in the position of God, it doesn't make it uh, unreasonable to attempt to put yourself in the position of God. So you're God, and you've decided to do something to fix mankind. Now we'll set aside the whole, I'm going to take human form and engage in some blood magic sacrifice to create a loophole. But if that's, let's say that's, that's actually what's required. Certainly God understands the problem of eyewitness testimony. Certainly a God would understand that uh, anonymous reports that can't be verified millennia after the fact would not be convincing and should not be convincing. If, if God would understand anything, it would be about the nature of evidence and what is or isn't reasonable. And so to claim that differences in the Gospels make this more reasonable, I understand why the why people are motivated to go to that line of reasoning, but you have to go all the way. And you have to say, okay, I now believe there's an all-wise God who understands everything much better than I do, and he screwed up in the biggest possible way by having an event happen when, at a period in time when we aren't able to get good records of it, where people aren't largely literate, where stories are passed around by word of mouth, and then we'll let those stories become copies of copies of translations of stories, and we'll publish them in a book where we have to acknowledge that we don't know who wrote them, and we have no way to investigate them, and this is the best that God could do. Well, that's ridiculous. I appreciate your skepticism, but so do when I. we all agree that the Titanic sank, but Frank Turk made a good point that some of the eyewitnesses saw the ship just sink in one piece, but some of them saw it break in part and then sink. Yeah. Good. So but when he, Ballard he made, discovered he, that, yeah, it was broken in two pieces, but yeah, in traumatic so that, experiences. So, yeah, so you're, the, the time to believe it was broken in two pieces is when we actually had the evidence for it. Yes. If we yeah. established two separate Titanic religions, one that claim it broke into two pieces and one that claim it sank as one piece, w at least one of those would have been wrong. Yeah. So the, the I think... But we all agree that the Titanic sank, though, so, even before it was discovered in 86. Yes, there's nothing, there's nothing supernatural about a ship sinking. 
So to be clear, a- Andrew, one of the things that happened is I, I made a point and then Matt followed up uh, with a second point yeah. um, about reliability. Um, so it, in terms of just responding to like, hey, I think I understood your point or this is what I understood the points you yeah. made to be. Do you understand what point Matt was uh, making or trying to make in terms of yeah. you know the skepticism generally? The thing, the, yeah, thing, I, the, the thing about Titanic is ships sink. We know this to be the case. Uh, we have survivors from the incident, and it's not remarkable at all that the survivors would accurately report that the ship sank and get other details wrong. There's nothing. Everything about this is fundamentally mundane. That's not the case when you start talking about miraculous conceptions and divine miracles and all of these other things which we don't have examples for. We have a dialogue when these miracles are happening. No, we have uh, we have records of them. So, I here yeah. let, let me take a different track. Andrew, I I don't know uh, when or or where you went to high school or or had whatever scenario. If you had a group of people, right? who, you know, were between the age of zero and 30. And there, the, you know, group of friends, there was some conflict over here, we'll say, um, it got sparked because people were disagreeing over who was gonna pay the check at a restaurant. And then after that, an argument ensued, and there's, you know, it's a collection of friends and married couples, et cetera, and you are trying to figure out, wait a minute, who started this, who's in the wrong, what's going on? You get completely opposite characterizations and details from everyone in that conflict. They were eyewitnesses. It was something incredibly, incredibly important to them because it's shattering their friend group. And it happened last Thursday. So in that scenario, Sally is saying that Margaret is in the wrong. Margaret is saying Sally's in the wrong. They hate each other. They're saying conflicting things. Can you draw a conclusion reliably about what definitely happened? In my in my example, yeah, I don't know what that has to do, do with the no, guy. No, 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 no. So I'm trying to make a broader point about eyewitness testimony. I think I, again, but I'm just why couldn't you just answer? So all he's asking is, given that scenario, can you reasonably conclude what actually happened? You'd have to interview all the eyewitnesses. Yes, so, yeah. So you interview the eyewitnesses. Uh, Sally says Margaret was being really rude and then said something snide about how Margaret always pays the check and that Sally offered to pay the check and this then Margaret the was offended, right? right? And that's that? what Margaret argument. says. Hold, oh, sorry, what's the, what's the point you're making? What do they call that, the telephone argument? You say something to one person. No, it's not no, no, identical. No, so, no, no, so it's, it's not identical to that. That is the result of your interviewing Margaret in this scenario. And when you interview Sally... Oh, sorry, and when you interview Margaret, uh, Margaret says, well, I always pick up the check... Um, a fact that Sally now contests. And I was uh, feeling awkward because it seemed like Sally uh, wanted to offer and there was a brief sort of awkward, oh, should I, what, huh, take the check? And then uh, Sally freaked out because I ended up paying the check uh, because I didn't know. And those are the two stories that you get. Can you conclude who was being rude to whom first? No. Can you conclude just based on that whether or not Margaret has always paid the check when they go to lunch? No. So given that, given the like, you know, I can't conclude what it is, I don't know uh, what happened there, why would you conclude, oh, I know what happened when Jesus was crucified? It doesn't get more reliable 2,000 years after the facts. Yeah. So do, do you... We have both after the Gospels. We have Paul's letters. We have... Yeah, so now, okay. so now the scenario changes. Now we have you, guy. you now can't interview Margaret or Sally, and someone else has written down like descriptions of what they said, uh, and it's you know you've you've not been to the places and you've yeah. never met the people. We now have ten people yeah. who may or may not have been there, mm-hmm. who may or may not have talked to Margaret or Sally, yeah. who have written down their second-hand hearsay versions at best of what Margaret and Sally said, and you seem to think that this makes it more reasonable to come to conclusion, and our point is it is less reasonable to come to a conclusion. Do you understand the, the point we're making? 
Yes. Okay, so but given that... Wouldn't the, wouldn't the Lord give us manuscripts so we can look over them and see... No, no, no. So you're, so you're not addressing the point the, the way that we're making it here. Let me, let me, let me well, see if I can go through it this way. When you are saying, presumably, can, can, do you have a, 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 a confident conclusion that Jesus Christ died and then was resurrected three days later? Is that yeah. something that you believe? Okay. Is, yeah. your, is the evidence that you're pointing to, you've, you've pointed to evidence for that belief I, on this call, I believe, which is the text of the Bible. Is that correct? That would be fair, yes. Yeah. Okay, so if I hand you even transcripts of evidence, of, of sorry, of, from interviews with uh, Sally and Margaret in my hypothetical, that's something that in this call you've indicated wouldn't lead you to confidently conclude what happened. Is that correct? Correct, but that's not... So a, a less happened. direct record of what occurred with Jesus' uh, crucifixion exists, and you have drawn a more confident conclusion. And I know why. Do you understand why, at least to us, that appears to be in conflict with how you interpret evidence? That seems... An, inconsistent in your reasoning. I understand your, but the, the Gospels are very specific on these. Uh, they're, that, they're, they are they're, less direct and more temporally removed yeah. from the incident than an interview with Margaret and Sally would be seven days later. Do you think that the Gospels are stronger evidence for the resurrection than my hypothetical interviews with Margaret and Sally are for the lunch debacle? Yes. Yeah. Because your interview didn't have the Old Testament. Because what? Your interview didn't have the Old Testament. Okay. I, there's no transcript of an interview in the Bible, right? I'm not a biblical scholar, but I feel very confident in saying at no point is there a transcript of a reliably... The, the, real, difference, the real difference Jesus. here... The real difference here is not whether or not there's an Old Testament or whether or not there's a God trying to keep the record accurate. Those are both cases of special pleading. The real difference here is that you have begun with a belief and are interpreting the evidence with respect to that belief. What you have essentially done with respect to Jamie's analogy is you have concluded for some other reason that Margaret actually doesn't ever pay the check, and then you find the evidence that's consistent with that belief and say that it supports your conclusion. That is the exact opposite way of how we are supposed to view evidence if we are going to be reasonable and rational. This is a flaw in the way that you are evaluating evidence, and your religion has given you defense mechanisms so that this flaw doesn't seem to bother you, so that you can come up with some excuse. Well, if there was a God, wouldn't that God make sure we had the right information? Perhaps. But you're ignoring the fact that if there was a God, there wouldn't be any question about this information in the first place. And we don't get to assume there's a God in order to claim that the information is accurate. What you're doing is saying, hey, in the issue with Margaret and Sally, there's a waiter, and that waiter wrote a book about what Margaret and Sally had been doing for years beforehand, and that waiter's testimony overrides everything, and I'm going to believe it and use it to interpret it. And yet still, we have no evidence of a waiter. We have no way to interview a waiter, and the waiter is the very thing that we're trying to prove. Because this whole story from Jamie isn't about who paid the check. It's about whether or not there is a waiter who can confirm who paid the check. Yeah. All hail the prophet waiter. Peace be upon him. <laughs> Sorry, right, but do, do you understand the point that Matt is making? Yeah. Do you see how it's an analogy for the, the way that your reasoning plays out if it's applied to the resurrection in the Bible? As a, as a reliable story? I understand. Okay. So what would change your mind? About, well, about the Bible not being true? Yeah, about the resurrection, sure. I don't know why I keep hitting that one, but about the Bible being true. I think there's loads of evidence. Oh, so, but Matt's question was, what would change your mind? I mean, saying whatever question you're asked, honestly answering... I don't know is not something we're going to fault you for or shame you for. 
I'd say evidence for abiogenesis or the panspermia theory. Wow. What? Wait, so hold on. This is what I meant when I said your religion is giving you defense mechanisms because neither one of those are relevant to the subject at hand yeah. and demonstrate another flaw that even if, even if we had no evidence for abiogenesis or panspermia or any of those things, creationism doesn't become true by default. Well, so actually I would say if you had explained those things to me properly... Or at least I had had you know the the fullest understanding possible of all of biological science, including evolution, and a you know encyclopedic memory even beyond that of R and raw of what animal evolved from what or whatever. Uh, and I had you know somehow specific knowledge of how and when and where abi abiogenesis occurred. That wouldn't have affected my belief in God at all, and I don't know why it would affect yours at all. Meanwhile, the possibility of abiogenesis has in fact been demonstrated and the building blocks of life have been found throughout the universe. So there's nothing particularly implausible about life arising from non-living matter. So you want me to demonstrate that genesis no, no, no. So, so here's here's what I will say. So we've 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 been on this call for a while, and I, I you know, I'll want to repeat call, and I know that Eric will, uh, you know, eventually um, want uh, to to hear from you as well. Um, do you do you email, or is there some way to get in touch with you in between now and the next phone call? Yeah, I'll call. I'll call back. Uh, well, so call so yes, but in between that, because if we're communicating even just over email. That that's a way for us to communicate where we have the links and references uh, that you can take your time and read and understand and respond with links and evidence and questions, et cetera, uh, in a more detailed way. So instead of having Matt summarize part of the research, you'd be able to read it yourself and check the methodology and all of this. So if you can do me the favor of emailing uh, tv at uh, atheist-community.org, um, I would love to stay in touch with you in between calls, but I, I want to get to other callers as well. Yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, this went so long. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, hey, I, I, I've no, got the red a, button in front of me. It was a fine conversation. It we're was not, good. We're not yeah. mad that it went long. Yeah, uh, it's it's valuable, and even mm -hmm. even if something that you've said didn't change our mind, or something we said didn't change your mind, there are other people listening who are going, "Ooh, wow! I never thought of it that way." From yeah, yeah. perhaps both perspectives, yeah. uh, but the ones that are agreeing with you are wrong. Sorry, I have to say that it's. <laughs> he, he's just joking around, Andrew. Um, although I know he uh, he means it. Uh, yeah. So, um, thank you for calling uh, for calling in. Hold on one second. Yeah, that's weird. Um, and you know, I, I hope you call again. And then, really, no email in between uh, show appearances, um, and and we'll or calls, and we'll we'll be in touch. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, well. <laughs>